Welcome to Open House NYC. Today I'm coming to you from the 35th floor of the tallest residential tower in the world. It's located in Midtown on that stretch of 57th they call Billionaire's Row. Inside, the entry gallery flows effortlessly into this expansive great room with soaring ceilings. Check out the show-stopping city views through the oversized windows. Your guests may just spend the whole evening snapping selfies instead of enjoying the feast which you prepared in the sleek modern chef's kitchen. The master bedroom suite is serene and luxurious with a decadent bathroom, one of three bedrooms in this over 4,000 square foot sky-high stunner. This week we're all about maximalist decor. Our journey on the road of excess begins at the Brooklyn apartment of artist and designer Misha Khan and his partner, editor-in-chief of Interview Magazine, Nick Haramis. Their home is a delightful funhouse of color and creativity that begins the moment you walk in. Let's join them for a closer look. Hi, my name is Nick Haramis. I'm the editor-in-chief of Interview Magazine. I'm Misha Khan. I'm a furniture designer and artist. And uh, welcome to our home in Greenpoint. I think this is it's just a completely normal home. <laughs> it's funny because I'm colorblind, and so Misha, I feel like, is often playing tricks on me by telling me how subtle and, and quiet each room is. Our building is just sort of the most unassuming building in Brooklyn. And quite recently, all of the lights seem to have blown. So it's just like a stairway to hell. Yeah, I think it makes it extra fun to come in here. You don't expect to open your door to this. Every time we would sort of think a room was done, Misha would complain that it was a little bit too minimalist. So now our joke is that if your eyes aren't bleeding, we haven't done the right job. It's like a wide sort of railroad style apartment. Um, and so I wanted to kind of break up the rooms. Oh, there is logic to it. So the living room's kind of like these very earthy jungle vibe. And then the closet's sort of this green, fallow, lightly Japonais discotheque. You can't just say it's a Japanese discotheque without explaining. <laughs> there, are, there are LED lights that sort of like surround the perimeter of the ceiling that when you turn off the actual overhead lights in the walk-in, it does feel like you're in a nightclub. Then the sort of subdued, calm bedroom that I was really excited for is now populated by this beautiful Tadanori Yoku print of a woman who's smiling, but all of her teeth have been knocked out and she's got blood coming down her face. Misha made the sconces that flank the bed. The one on the left is covered with gold leaf. And then I wanted to make another one so that we would have symmetry in the room. Unbeknownst to me, since I'm colorblind, I did, uh, what is it, copper leaf? Mm -hmm. I think they look the same, but they're apparently quite different. And the fan is almost functional, except for, I guess I wired the fan backwards, so it sucks instead of blows. I think the first thing that we got was the Campana Brothers fish scale cabinet, followed by this couch that we're sitting on, which is also the Campana Brothers, which clearly feels like some sort of monster animal. But they're things of art, and so I've fallen asleep on this couch more times than Misha was happy with, and have like matted this woolly mammoth. I, before, yes. before you guys arrived, we were combing it to make it seem a little bit less matted. This is the couch that I brought into the house, and Nick brought the uh, leather uh, rectilinear IKEA couch. Like it's the last bastion of minimalism in this otherwise jungle book. Because Misha hates the couch so much, we've now propped it up with a fortress of very loud printed pillows. And then our, the newest baby that we brought home is the Studio Yobe. And when it arrived, it's like a high-tech surveillance camera that we haven't set up. So right now it's just a totally ornamental, beautiful thing, but we can spy on people. The mirror is from a series. I sew the form, so it's kind of a silhouette made into a balloon. And then there's resin poured in with air and it's kind of blasted and tumbled so it gets this hard shell that looks really soft and squishy but is actually solid. And they're called Saturday Morning because they're very cartoonish. Misha brought home uh, recently the lamp, a friend of ours. She met this guy on an online dating app and then when he introduced himself to us, um, he put out his hand in a way that looks like the light bulb um, and said enchanté. We were like, oh, I don't know if it's gonna be a sustaining relationship because clearly he's very gay. <laughs> I just thought it would be a really nice floor lamp. 
As like sort of a larger metaphor for our relationship, it always feels like you're on some sort of adventure and the beauty of it is the excitement, but then there's always this sense that you might die. Um, this table, which Misha made as a present for me, which is inspired by the Eve Klein table, does feel like a walking time bomb because if it shatters, the blue pigment will just destroy our lives. <laughs> We've struck a balance between stuff is really visually eccentric and I think it's still really cozy in here and easy to live with everything. Um, no? Yeah. <laughs>The table I saw in a picture that the gallery sent over, I was so excited about it. And then the delivery guy came with it and we brought it up and it was actually this floppy rubber thing. <laughs> and I was so surprised, so I, I called my gallery back to ask about it and um, he just was like, well, Misha, of course. It was from the series about the instability of the European Union. It's in the shape of Denmark. Yeah. And it has these sort of candy cane legs. It, it would just be the most like austere, stoic dinner party if you were in fact to eat on it. So it's not the easiest, but it's... I had a dinner party where we ate off it and it's just like extra fun. The kitchen, when we moved in, was probably just like the most basic kitchen you can imagine. So now it's kind of this like explosion of color, which is a great way to wake up in the morning. It's the most jarring alarm clock in the world. And it was funny because we started by doing the cabinets and then that wasn't quite enough. Misha kept being quite worried that it was gonna seem a little too minimalist. So then we did the floors with the tiles. Then all of a sudden the fridge was covered. Then there were really loud printed curtains that were added. It's now just its own weird rainbow. The sheep we got at a little like roadside place and then we put the fur on the outside ourselves. I hope you had a fun time coming over and maybe got some insane ideas for your own place. And we're so sorry. <laughs>